Today I want to talk about uh, Hall Effect sensors uh, and how they work and do a very brief demonstration of, uh, of a homemade Hall Effect sensor, if you will. Uh, the way the Hall Effect works or uh, the sensors work is you have a, a semiconductor, or in my case it's a conductive plane, and I will be using aluminum foil uh, to represent that plane. This, this uh, kind of rectangular solid uh, represents the plane. Uh, if you have charged particles, such as electrons, uh, traveling through the plane in this direction, and you have a magnetic force uh, perpendicular to that plane in this direction, so imagine a uh, bar magnet on either side the north and south, and then there's another bar magnet down here, the north and south. They don't have to be bar magnets, but this just gives you a, an idea of where the, how the magnetic field is, is protruding through the, um, the plane of the conductor. Uh, under these conditions, you will have uh, the charged particles being diverted away from the straight line path. Normally you'd think the electrons come in one side and they would uh, exit out the other. And they do that, however, there's some pressure pushing them off to this edge. And if we were looking at uh, positively charged uh, uh, materials, so if this plane were a plasma or something and you, were, you had positively charged ions going through, then they would be diverted the other way. But in the Hoffick sensor case, we have a conductive plane of metal or a semiconductor material, and we have uh, electric current passing through it, and you will have the presence of, uh, of some kind of magnetic field. Now this force is very weak. Uh, in my case, I'll be uh, bringing out my apparatus and I'll be passing say three amps of current uh, through the aluminum foil and I'll only be re re, uh, reading just a few millivolts between uh, this point and th uh, another point on the other side of the plane. So I want to bring that out. So here's my Hall effect sensor. Kind of show off what I've got here. I basically have two very large uh, neodymium magnets generating a magnetic field uh, through the material. I'm using a it's an aluminum block as a as a spacer. Uh, you could use wood or a piece of plastic or whatever. But I'm trying to keep the magnets separated since they're very uh, challenging to to pull apart. I have the aluminum foil uh, sandwiched between two pieces of paper and to insulate uh, my conductive plane from this larger piece of aluminum and also to, to um, insulate it from the, uh, the magnets because I want all the electric current to pass through that very thin um, conductive plane. Uh, I'm not sure that that's necessarily a requirement, but that's uh, what I seem to have had the best results with. Uh, inside, I've trimmed the corners uh, so that I just have mostly, I'm reading off of an edge that's under the magnet. Um, so the current has a path through directly under the magnet, and then I'm able to read uh, via these tabs on the side the electric field or the potential from one side to the other. Uh, just using another block to prevent damaging my workspace. As I set this down, it's a magnetic workspace, so uh, they kind of want to have some striking force. So we'll set up the sensor. First we'll need to set up an electric current traveling through the uh, the sensor and conventional current. This is my positive lead, and these are very strong magnets, so I've got to be careful. 
this is my positive lead, my negative lead. So conventional current would say that things are going this direction. Uh, again, I apologize. Uh, but uh, the actual electrons are traveling this way. So turn on my power supply. So we have current now traveling this way. The electron current is actually traveling this way. And then we're going to use the this voltmeter on these two tabs. We should see negative one millivolt. So if I flip these around, we have one millivolt. So since I have electrons traveling this way and the negative side seems to be on this tab, so if we kind of orient this the way that we had before, it would seem that we have the field is perpendicular uh, out this way uh, to the to the sensor, and just to show that um, uh, we're not kind of screwy here, uh, this is one millivolt. You may be thinking you are just measuring the voltage drop across the uh, uh, the space. We, if we kind of test from end to end, uh, you'll see we have more like eight or nine millivolts just in the resistance uh, in this direction. So current-wise, we should have, there should be no uh, potential difference from one side to the other in the conductor. Um, so we still have approximately a little less than a, uh, a millivolt. And if I turn off my current source, or if we actually, we'll just unplug uh, one side of this sensor and we'll try to measure across, uh, you'll see that the meter uh, drops back to zero. So that's really the basics of how a Hall effect sensor works and how a, a simple um, Hall effect sensor could be uh, constructed. Now, mind you, this is not a practical sensor. It's way too big. These are very strong magnets. Um, and to make it more practical, you would use something like an op amp. Uh, that's what they actually use in the, in the real sensors. Is there's, there's probably several stages of op amps uh, to amplify uh, this, this uh, voltage uh, that's being measured across there. It might be in the, in the nanovolts. Uh, in one of those sensors. So, uh, like I said, simple demonstration. I uh, hope you enjoy the video.